You're probably bored of hearing about the cost of living crisis. The nation is in the grip of a cost of living crisis. Soaring energy bills. Runaway inflation set to soar above 7%. But don't switch off. I'm going to tell you what it means in real life for the household health and beauty categories and what you can do to sell more and make more money in your store. We've all read or watched the news. We all know that real wages are going down both this year and into next year, and shoppers overall have less spending power. Grocery inflation is at 17.1% and you can't get much for a pound anymore. Less than one third of grocery items now cost less than a pound. One in four shoppers have downgraded themselves from either comfortable to managing or from managing to struggling. Now that's important because it changes how these people think about the way they shop and they're switching from big main shops to smaller, more frequent top-up shops to help them use items more efficiently, cut down on wastage and to help manage their budget. Top-up shops don't necessarily mean the convenience channel, some are done in discounters or supermarkets, but locality and ease is important for these shoppers so many are shopping in convenience stores. The main four ways that shoppers can save money are to buy less, buy more on promotion, switch to cheaper products and switch to cheaper stores. Now shoppers are buying fewer items where they can but the household health and beauty categories are mostly seen as essentials. Even products like premium face moisturisers are things that shoppers say they're not willing to sacrifice. On promotions, the number of shoppers who say they're shopping around for the best deals is increasing. It's not surprising. But the number of promotions in the market is actually in long-term decline for various reasons. So when you do have a promotion, do everything you can to help shoppers see it. We all know that off-shelf promotions see a bigger uplift, as do those supported by POS, and because more shoppers are looking for them, you're more likely now to drive extra sales if you make them as obvious as possible to shoppers in your store. Private label sales are growing faster than branded product sales because shoppers are trading down to cheaper products. Is that true? Well, for most categories it is true, but interestingly, it's not true in all categories. In total grocery, there's a clear gap between the growth of brands and that of private label, although it's worth noting that the gap between the two is slightly shrinking. In the personal care category, shoppers are trading down to private label. Leading brands still take the majority of sales, so you need to keep these on shelf, but you should offer private label or tertiary brand options in shower and bath, hand wash, hand moisturizers, and face wash. Now the hair care, deodorants, shaving, and dental care categories are much more heavily brand loyal, although entry-level mouthwash does sell well. Household and laundry are a little more brand loyal overall than personal care. Now during the pandemic, shoppers trusted the leading brands as the experts to get the job done and sanitize their homes. That brand loyalty has stuck, although we are now seeing some shoppers switching down into private or tertiary label. Entry-level household brands such as Astonish and Elbow Grease are performing well in discounter stores, but you still need a strong presence from the leading brands such as Flash, Sif, Dettol and Mr Muscle because these still have the biggest share of shoppers spent. Over-the-counter medicines is a completely different story in which the leading brands are growing and private label sales are declining. Medicine shoppers are exceptionally brand loyal because they put trust in the experts. And the upshot is that you should prioritise the leading brands in your range. So that's Nurofen, Panadol, Anadin, Benalin, Lemsip, Strepsil, Sudafed, Pyrites, Benadryl, Imodium, Rennie and Gaviscon. And you should stock Elastoplast Plasters too, as they're by far the market leader. Now, if you've got space, it's a very good idea to stock private and tertiary label paracetamol and ibuprofen alongside the brands. These do sell well, with shoppers looking for the lowest price. Finally, shoppers are switching to cheaper retailers and as you already know, discounters are the fastest growing channel. What you might not know is that the second fastest channel is convenience growing ahead of the supermarkets. Now there are lots of reasons why this is. A big one is that many households are extremely short on time, so they're shopping locally to save driving further to a supermarket or discounter. Now whilst some of the convenience channel growth is being driven by shoppers who are struggling financially, it's also being driven by those who are comfortable. These shoppers have plenty of money to spend, they're just short on time, and they will buy their usual products and brands as long as you have them on shelf. The most common mission in convenience is the planned top-up shop, making up more than one in five of all shoppers. This larger shopping mission is high spending and, as you might expect, it over-indexes with the household health and beauty categories. All the more reason to get these categories right in your store. If you're a convenience store operator, you can find full detail of how to select and lay out your household health and beauty product range on corerange.com. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.